This is the Progetto 46. It is a tier 8 Italian auto reloading medium, and it is an absolutely fantastic vehicle at that. It features a super dangerous 240 damage per shot. With its three shells, that's over 720 alpha damage. The vehicle's got really good pen 272 on the gold, 190 on the standard. It's got gun depression, mobility. Basically, the Progetto is a do it all medium. And while it does require a bit more skill, than than something like the Chimera, it's not too hard to drive. Currently, Wargaming has it in a draw, and if you want to get your hands on it guaranteed, it's going to cost you 15,000 gold. Definitely not worth it, in my personal opinion. Normally, you'll see tanks like this come into the stores for base gold prices of 7,500 gold, so I wouldn't recommend to do the draw. The major reason I purchased this draw is so that I could get my hands on the Seeker Camouflage, which I have to admit is an incredibly cool-looking camo, and I'm actually quite glad I was able to get my hands on it. This looks so good. I don't think anybody can really disagree with that. Well, I mean, there's definitely going to be people that don't like the camo, but I think this looks great. And that's why we're making the video for today on the Progetto. So we're going to head into some gameplay here and uh, let's see what the vehicle can do. Okay, here we are on Dynasty's Pearl. This is an okay map. Personally, I don't like Dynasty. I think it's too small of a map for the game. And I feel like mediums don't really have as much potential as heavies on a map like this. I mean, Himmelsdorf is pretty well balanced, but even then, Wargaming's making Himmelsdorf a bit larger. So I would be inclined to see Wargaming extend out Dynasty and maybe separate the park from the town just a little bit. But we are going to make our way into this bush right here. This is one of my favorite positions to get some early game shots off. We got the enemy Super Pershing. We have quite a bit of vehicles. I do have some support, but the question is how much support that really is. We're going to get a shell into the Super Pershing. We back up, so he bounces me in the turret. You'll notice this is where that auto reloader feels super, super nice, because instead of constantly having the sling shells, I can just shoot once, I can reload, I can bonk the, the uh, Super Pershing again. Unfortunately, that one does end up bouncing. However, we do get the third shell out, so we were still able to take about 400 hit points off of the Super Pershing, and then we're just going to load a gold shell, pen him in the lower plate for 186, and look at that, we've already dealt 1,200 damage. And now we just reload. The Progetto, as most auto-reloading mediums, has a very quick reload time. So as you can see, we already have almost all three shells loaded. That's actually really, really nice, and it makes, you know, generally using this tank feel quite nice. So the stayer is going to get some damage into this Barask, and I'm going to try and just jump down here. We're going to finish... I was really trying not to get gun blocked by that stayer, but even uh, even moving all around, we were still managing to hit his gun. That's all right, though. We got a lot of mobility in this tank, as you can see, and we're going to use that mobility to make our way towards this WZ-111. We already have all three shells loaded, so we're ready to lock and load some shells into our opponents here. Definitely going to shoot at the IS-2, just because it's an easier tank to pen. Oh, okay, unless my game does that. I don't know what the heck... What just happened? I think I lagged or something, but uh, oh well. Let's uh, dump a shell into the WZ-111's track wheel. That way he can't move as much. And we're going to reload again. We're going to shoot him again in the side. Thank you for the 240 HP. We have the M4 Yo on the side. There you go. Nice 245 roll. This is where that higher 240 damage per shot does feel quite comfortable on this tank. Nice 253 into the lower plate of the WZ-111, and the Stayer is going to finish him off, so we're going to steal the kill. Oh, yeah. All right, well, pretty good game for the Progetto. We didn't really need to do much, but that's kind of how the tank feels. We farmed 2,900 damage, and we got a very solid win out. Really, the only reason we didn't get 3k out was because our uh, shell onto the rear of that IS-2 kind of went to Narnia. But, hey, I'll take it. As we can see, this is an incredibly fun tank to drive. I've said this in the past, and I'll say it again, I absolutely love auto-reloaders, and I think their playstyle is kind of the best when it comes to all the vehicles in the game. In an auto-reloader, you always feel confident that you have some sort of capability to defend yourself, even when you've dumped your clip. Auto-loaders, let's say you're driving something like a 50B or a 4005, you dump your clip, that's it. You gotta get out of there, you better hope nobody's rushing you, or you're going to die. 
A vehicle like the Progetto, you shoot two, three shells, you still have about 2,000 plus DPM on single shot, which is more than enough to deal with anybody in front of you. The thing hits hard, it's got pen. So because of that, the Progetto just feels amazing because you're never in a situation where you're worried that you need to save the shells unless your team is losing the battle and you know you're going to get pushed on. But in the situation where you're winning, you are so dominant because you can dump three shells into somebody back in the cover and they might only hit you back once. It's just the flexibility of a vehicle like this that allows you to conserve or dump whenever you feel like that basically makes it dominate in the current meta. Oh, here we are, second game. Up against us, we have a Centurion 1, a Kampf Panzer 07, okay, and a Silencer, I guess. I'm not really going to count that as a medium, but it is a pretty mobile tank. Okay, I'm not too worried. We should do fine, especially with the vehicle we're driving. This is an incredibly easy tank to do well in. Now, we notice that we have a decent chunk of our team driving over towards the heavy flank. I am personally not the biggest fan of that. I would much rather have my team maneuver over towards this side of the map so we can get some decent bleeds out. However, that obviously does not appear to be the case. Now, that's not going to stop me from doing at least some quick spotting over here. It is always a good idea to just detect your opponents and know where they're going. So we already have the Kampf Panzer 07 spotted in front of us. I am going to turn my tank uh, butt backwards so we can run whenever we need to. But there you go. We can already see the Tiger. Now we can see the Silencer over here. All right. Well, that's good news. Okay. The Kampf Panzer is going to run and bonk. There you go. 246 damage into his vehicle. Thank you very much. All right, well, let's see. Is the KPZ going to face us? Does not look like that's the case. We have the silencer off to the side. Okay, that was just a bad shot, but it's all right because the KPZ apparently hits us in the side. All right. Well, the good news is that we've just basically distracted our opponents at this uh, situation. I don't know if that... Um, if that KPZ was going to rush us or not. So I'm just going to leave for now. And we'll kind of chill on this ramp over here. No, the KPZ was not going to chase us. Okay. Well, I mean, that's good news. Our team has killed two heavies at this point. We basically did what we needed to. We distracted two tanks. And uh, our team easily picked up the kills on the other side. So we're going to move up over here. I don't know where their Borsig is, which is obviously a big threat. We also have the VK100. There you go. 183 shell, we have the Centurion, there you go, 270 damage into his vehicle, and there you go, a nice 215. So just like that, we took double, almost triple the damage that Centurion took off of us, and we're back in the cover. And again, this is why the Progetto feels so nice, it's just that auto-loading gun allows you to just dump into your opponent, not really have to worry about the consequences. So we're going to push down here and have my voice crack a bit. Let's reload, we got three more seconds left, and oh, we're lagging a bit, but there's one shell into the Centurion, two shells, unfortunately that shell actually bounced. We're not getting too lucky right now with our RNG, but it's alright. We got the VK, and ow, I did not think that KPZ was going to shoot us right there, because, I mean, why would you dude just killed himself for it? Uh, sometimes I never understand the thoughts behind players. All right, so we obviously have the VK in front of us, and I am in the range of a one-shot, but he would have to basically max roll me, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm more worried about the Borsig, but as we can see, the Borsig at this point has been detected. So we're going to get one shell into the VK, two shells into the VK, 274A finishes him off. Pretty solid stuff so far. We're going to use this 274 as cover, because obviously I don't have the uh, protection. There's the silencer in mid. Got the Borsig off to the side. There you go. One easy shell into the silencer. I'm just going to go for it. I don't know if the Borsig has a shell. I'm hoping he doesn't. Oh, he probably does. Oh, okay, we're good. We're good. We got one. We got two. And, oh, I didn't drive like that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. My Wi-Fi has been really, really buggy lately. However, we still did pretty good. Uh, I would say that was a absolute stomp of a battle, 2,600 damage, an easy win, and again, a pretty good situation to showcase where the Progetto does fantastic. Our 274A was a pretty solid teammate as well, so I can't really get all too mad. 
I, uh, I really like this tank. I think it's super fun to play. I think it looks amazing, especially with this camo that Wargaming added to it. And I really think anybody that would pick up this tank would absolutely enjoy it, because what is there not to like about this vehicle? Even if you don't want to spend money, which I wouldn't recommend you do, as I said, the draw is uh, overpriced, I would just recommend to play in the P44 Pantera. This is the Tech Tree variant, has actually more DPM, it's got more mobility, and it's got a very, very nice gun with more penetration. So, in certain situations, I actually like the Pantera more than the Progetto, but I do like the Alpha Damage and the Faster Intra Clip as well, so it's kind of back and forth. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this vehicle. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.